I've been a goddamn suit to talk about this clunky mess. I'm gonna go with Ghost here. Not only because he I kind of forgot about that, didn't I? Yeah, I just... You ever have one of those things where you just forget about a project for... Four years? Well, no point putting it off any longer. So, let's jack in. It is so hot in this suit. Doesn't even fit me anymore. This thing's like two sizes too small. I look like a like a <laughs> dwarf in this. I want you to go back and imagine you're around 10, 11, playing Ratchet and Clank, Ape Escape, and Banjo Kazooie. Then seeing your older cousin playing this. I would watch religiously whenever he would stick that bad boy in and play, but I never touched the controller for two reasons. One, I thought the game looked complex, like I had to think about dodging all those bullets, ammo conservation, and those jumps and flips. I was intimidated, scared by the complexity and edginess that was before me. The second reason was that my cousin would shout at me if I messed with his save profile. Man, I thought he was so cool back then. Those were the days. I was young and stupid back then, but now I'm older and wise. Okay, maybe not wiser, but at least I'm older. Older and... Dying. But I found my old copy of the game, so let's pop this bad boy in to see if my younger self had any taste back then. So after the Warner Brothers logo is done being radioactive, we get punched into the main menu. Honestly, it looks promising except for the painfully thin text. We get treated to a cutscene, live action no less, because apparently this game has over one hour of original footage parallel to Matrix Reloaded, where we don't get to play as Neo and the gang, but instead the side characters Niobe and Ghost. Yeah, you remember these guys from the movie? I barely remember them too, so what a great way to start the game, eh? You know, a lot of critics actually said they didn't like the fact that this game didn't follow Neo and the main gang, but instead these side characters that really didn't have much to do with the story in the movies. But, in all honesty, I actually kind of like that. It's fun seeing what the so-called unimportant characters do to allow the protagonist to go on their quest. And if you were a fan of the movie franchise, this would have been kind of cool. You're not an all-powerful Jesus symbolism named Tom that has an inability to express emotion. You're an agent with some special powers, but not a god. But even though we're following different characters, it's a shame they're still following Neo's directive. As in not showing any emotion. This won't be easy. That is was my friend. I have to tell you, Niobe, I'm allergic to eye contact, and color, and emotion, and good acting. He didn't trust him. Whatever's in that box costs- Jesus Christ, I don't care. Oops, also allergic, eye contact, remember? And here's Sparks. You remember him? Me neither. He does comic relief. Body's back to Zion. Do you prefer cremation or the gardens? <laughs> colon, double backslash, execute command. We go to a character select screen where we either get the players Ghost and Niobe. And this isn't for each mission, by the way. This is the only character select screen in the entire game. You choose one for the entire playthrough. So I'm gonna go with Ghost here. Not only because he's male, but also because he's Asian and Australian. It's three layers of discrimination all rolled up into one. one. And then we get booted to, yeah, this ugliness. It's weird, aesthetically they look fine. For PS2, this is passable, with graphics that match the actor's likeness as well. But the stiff motions and the mouth movement, you can't help but compare this to the live action 35mm. This game honestly shoots itself in the foot by giving us film clips, very long, expositional film clips, mind you, that cut directly into the in-game stuff. You can't help but to compare. Although, they both are equally as stiff. But one thing I do have to talk about is, well, I'm sure you can see it. Or rather, not see it, because it's not there. Color. My god. 
Look how dreary the city is. I know it's emulating the movie, but it's like Gotham City with the contrast slightly up. So this is the first level, pretty basic. We have to retrieve a package because plot. And oops, I accidentally shot a bullet. Well, I guess R1 shoots things, standard enough. And let's get moving. Oh my goodness, that's a, that's a run animation. Are we supposed to take that seriously? Maybe it's to put all the gunmen in a fit of laughter so we can easily kill them. He must be running so stiffly due to all that leather he's wearing. God, just imagine the squeaking. So how does Ghost control him? Well, he drives like a car. Well, instead of, oh, I don't know, every other video game in the world using the left analog stick to just move around in the direction you walk in, you instead have to veer yourself with the camera on the right stick. It's like tank controls? Sorta? And even though it's only sort of tank controls, it's 100% stupid. It's not like you just strafe left and right either. You turn in place, spinning while your neck contorts in a horrific fashion. Instead, to strafe, you press R2 and L2. And let me remind you, trying to remember that while also spamming R1 is harder than it looks. Intermixed in all this is hand-to-hand -hand combat, which, well, it works. You just have to spam circle because apparently no one can touch you while you're doing that. Maybe Ghost is a relative to Eddie with his easy play styles. Other than that, there isn't too much to say. Shoot with R1 and miss most of your shots. Run around kicking people in the head and get into hand-to-hand -to -hand combat while the guys with guns just... wait. So while going door to door, running like a wax madman with a latex fetish, you may encounter the most sinister enemy you've ever encountered. One, shrouded with darkness expertise and only no suffering. The dreaded loading screen. Yeah, you'll face so many loading screens in one level purely because this game can't seem to load more than five minutes of gameplay at a time. My god, if you thought Sonic 06 was bad, well, it's the worst, but this is pretty close. Now you would think that a shoot 'em up where you run down hallways with guns and straight arms pivoting like a madman in a spurs with just loading screens would be fairly easy. But no. No. While it's a basic running gun shoot 'em up, walking around like a goddamn robot and doing spinny moves by pressing L1 to focus and do all that matrix shit you see, this game is pretty difficult if you plan to play casually because while the AI is easy to exploit at times and quite often they glitch out, when the game does what it's supposed to do, it can be brutal. And that's the worst thing when reviewing games. Playing an easy but boring game means I can actually relax and think about all the funny stuff that's happening within. Playing a hard but rewarding game is obviously immensely satisfying. Woohoo! Easy! Didn't even break a sweat. But when a game is so boring to play or to look at or even get invested in while also grabbing your balls tighter than Trinity's outfits, this is true frustration. I'm just walking along and oh my god, a fucking helicopter just apparated out of thin air and is shooting me down. And after you attempt to take cover, a SWAT team comes down to unload a barrage of bullets while you have no cover and being flanked. Suffice it to say, it slaughters you. Which is why I resorted to cheats. Yes, you can call me a wuss for cheating, but in my defense, I didn't really cheat, I changed the system. I hacked in Matrix flavor. Also, that's what the game actually calls it, so give me a break. If you didn't notice in the main menu, there's a hacking option, obviously tying into the whole Matrix motif that's got going on, but in all honesty, it's kind of cool. You can manipulate levels into dropping certain weapons at certain stages. You can talk to Morpheus and Neo if you know what you're doing. There's actually a fair amount of depth to the simple hacking screen. They really went out with all the details here. Not that I really explored it that much, I just read off a list. I just put in invincibility and infinite ammo. Sue me, okay? Sue me. A fun little secret is that the cheat codes are actually displayed on highway signs during certain levels, which is pretty neat, I'll be completely fucking random. Oh yeah, there's car levels. They suck. Okay, perhaps that was a little bit too compact. And there are some cool things about it. Like the fact that cars blow up like a balloon hitting a needle. It's kinda crazy. But with all these explosions and gunfights and flying cars going on... I 
know I'm being a little bit negative here. This game does show some effort and passion into the Matrix universe. It's just that there are certain parts of this game that really piss you off. One of the earliest places I got stuck on was this room here. After shooting up these guys and using a flashbang that just flies all over the place, I was stuck inside this locker room with nowhere to go. There was a window I couldn't break and no door to speak of. And maybe after 30 minutes of just wandering around, I couldn't find a damn thing to do until I heard that you need to blow up the corridor to progress. But I had no explosives. I only have a machine gun which can't break glass. A flashbang and a stun grenade. So nothing can be used to. A stun grenade, also known as a flash grenade, flashbang, or sound bomb is a less lethal explosive device used to temporarily disorientate an enemy's senses and it is designed to produce a blinding flash of light and can also knock down walls. Why would I even put a C4 in CSGO if I can just throw a flashbang at them? By the way, I know there's going to be some gun enthusiast or explosion enthusiast that's going to be like, uh, actually, stun grenades, they actually produce a force that can knock down a wall. And look, I'm just covering that base right now. I don't care. I think I'm developing heat stroke. I need to actually, I need to take off these pants or something. <laughs> Fuck. Hey, a rooftop sequence. This is pretty... So after not fucking up the jump again, I finally make it to the phone where, ah oh shit, here's Agent Smith. A cool feature is that the agents are basically unkillable, much like in the movies. Going in hand-to-hand -hand combat with them is ill-advised, borderline suicidal, and they dodge all your bullets forever. I will give this game credit where it's due. I haven't played a game which plays an integral part of a movie series, and not just some add-on like Lord of the Rings of Third Age. It's just unfortunate that it's marred by clunky controls and less than appealing visuals. Sure, the animation during the cutscenes are pretty funny, but the AI and stiff animations and gameplay sure don't give you much to go by, even during the more tense scenes. There is variety though. Kinda. So really, this game is a mixed bag, much like the movie series itself. It has something for the fans of the series and not much else. But now we're up to the level that was most memorable to me, the sewer level. Now, I don't know why, because I barely played the game when I was little, as I said, but the sewer level is really sticking in my memory for some reason. I, I don't know why, so let's figure it out, shall we? I think I was a stupid kid who had no taste. This level sucks. But with all the bitching and complaining I'm doing as a generic internet video game reviewer boy, I can't hate this game. I just can't. It showed promise and it was a product of its time. Much like many smaller YouTube channels that you may have forgotten about. So, give this a chance and give them a chance. So, this video was four years too late. Was it worth it? Probably not. But, to make it up for you, I'm not going to do some elaborate Matrix parody. Because that, my friends, would be as what the youngins call cringe. So, I'll see you boys later, because I'm going to dive heatstroke. <laughs>